In this problem, we're told if m sub a equals 13 kilograms and m sub b is equal to 5 kilograms, determine the acceleration of each block. b, if initially m sub a is at rest 1.250 meters from the edge of the table, how long does it take it to reach the edge of the table if the system is allowed to move freely? And if m sub b equals 1 kilogram, how large must m sub a be if the acceleration of the system is to be kept at 1 hundredth of a g? So, in last problem, you solved for the equation for this, right? So the equation that represents these different variables for acceleration. So you should have gotten that acceleration is equal to m sub b times g over m sub a plus m sub b. So this was the equation you used for the last one, right, in problem 51. And now what we're going to do is use, uh, we're given the masses, so we can actually go ahead and solve for the acceleration, right? So they're telling us m sub a is equal to 13 and m sub b is 5. So we're just going to plug it into this and solve for a. So acceleration is going to be m sub b, which is 5, times g, which is gravity, which is 9.8, uh, over m sub a, which is 13, plus m sub b, which is 5. So if you go ahead and do this, 5 times 9.8 over 13 plus 5, you're going to get it's 2.722, which is just going to be about 2.7 meters per second squared. So this is going to be your answer for A. Let's move on to B. So B is, if initially M sub A is at rest, 1.250 meters from the edge of the table, how long does it take it to reach? So yeah, so let's write down what we're given for this problem because it's going to be a kinematic equation and it's easier if you just write down what you have. So what do we know? So it's going to say, if initially M sub A, our block, right, is at rest. So we know V sub zero is going to be zero meters per second, right? Because they're telling us it's initially at rest. And so if you know what the last problem looked like, it's basically has this block and they're asking it to move this direction. And we know it's moving 1.250 meters, right? That's when the edge of the table is. So this is our block. And then this distance is 1.250 meters. So what's its change in X? Its change in X, right, is the distance they tell us right here, 1.250 meters. So that's that. What else do we know? We know the acceleration of the block, right? That's exactly what we just solved for in the last problem. So we know A is going to be 2.7 meters per second. And then what are they asking for? They're asking how long. So a time, right? How long is time? So we're trying to solve for T. And so with these variables, we have to solve it, or solve for T. And so the equation we're going to use is delta X equals V sub 0 times T plus 1 half at squared. So hopefully by now you're pretty good at kinematics. And if you can just look at this equation, right, we're given all of these variables, delta x, we're given v sub zero, and then we're, we solve for a, right? So we have a, and we're trying to solve for t. So we just got to plug in now. So delta x is 1.250, which is equal to v sub zero, which is zero, times t, plus one half times a, which is 2.7, times t squared. So essentially 1.250 equals 0 times t is just 0. And then 1 half times 2.7 is just 1.35 times t squared. So if we want to solve for t squared, divide both sides by 1.35. So essentially t squared equals this, but we're going to square root both sides to get rid of it. So you're just going to get t equals the square root of 1.250 over 1.35. So we'll get that time equals, if you go ahead and solve this, you'll get 0.9622, which is about 0.96 seconds. So this right here is going to be your answer for B. So 0.96 seconds for B. And so that's B. And so now let's move on to C. So C is saying, if m sub b is one kilogram, how large must m sub a be if the acceleration of the system is to be kept at one g? So what we're gonna do is, so it's saying the acceleration, right, is gonna be one one hundredth of a g. And so you need to know that a g is essentially 9.8, right? 9.8 meters per second squared, and you're dividing it by 100. So really it's just gonna become 0 0.098. So 0 0.098 is gonna be our acceleration, and so if you notice this equation here, they're telling us m sub b is one kilogram. So all we got to do is solve for a, right? They're asking how large must m sub a be. So we're just going to plug this in for a, solve for m sub a. So 
0 0.098, which is one hundredth of a g, our acceleration, equals m sub b, which is one, right? One times nine point eight, which is g, over m sub a, which is what we're solving for, plus m sub b, which is one. So if we go ahead and solve this, I'm gonna multiply both sides by m sub a plus one. So 0 0.098 times m sub a plus one. So essentially this is gonna be 0 0.098 times m sub a plus, and then we're just multiplying 0 0.098 times one. So plus 0 0.098 equals, and then it's just one times 9.8, which is 9.8. And then what we're gonna to wanna to do is solve for m sub a. So just minus this from both sides, so minus 0 0.098 and I'm going to do this up here so 0 0.098 ma or m sub a equals and then 9.8 minus 0 0.098 is 9.702 divide both sides by this to get m sub a by itself and if you go ahead and do this 9.702 divided by 0 0.098 you're going to get 99 and so keep in mind what this is. It's a mass, or, or yeah, it's a mass. So it's going to be measured in kilograms, right? This one's measured in kilograms, so it's going to be in kg. So m sub a equals 99 kilograms. So this right here is going to be your answer to C, 99 kilograms. And so yeah, hopefully you found this video useful.